With the West firing up snowmaking this past week, it's time to look ahead by first taking a look back at uh, last year's data, of course. What's going on Midwest skiers and riders? Matthew Zabranski with MidwestSkiers.com and the season is edging closer and closer. Super duper exciting. And with all this hype building, one of the most common questions that I get pretty much on a daily basis is, when is the ski season going to start in the Midwest? Well, the truth is, I can't tell you that. Only Mother Nature can. But what I can do is give you some data. So today, we're going to examine the first three ski areas open for each state across the Midwest. No predictions, no ridiculous forecasts, just last season's data. Finally, I'll go over some averages across the Midwest and then give you the first 10 ski areas that were open last year in our region. As always, once the season starts to edge a bit closer, we'll have full coverage during the preseason, so be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Now, before we dive into the actual data, I'll start with just a quick recap of the general early season weather for last fall. Across the Midwest, we had a pretty rough season last year. It actually might be one of the worst on record, especially for length. Some ski areas did start early, but often had to close for a few weeks as temps climbed into the 60s and 70s in mid-November. And that's why you'll see a significant gap between a handful of ski areas and the rest of the pack. Stepping back and looking at it with a general view, ignoring some of these early openers, I would say that the Midwest was about 7 to 10 days behind the average when looking at just opening dates. We'll be working alphabetically through the 11 states, or I guess uh, regions, since I'm going to count the UP as its own category. So let's go ahead and get started with Iowa. Since Iowa only has three total resorts, you'll be getting all three. The first ski area to open last season was Sundown Mountain, opening on November 26th followed by Seven Oaks, who opened on December 1st. Mount Crescent rounded things out a few weeks later, opening on January 4th. Heading across the border to Illinois, the first ski area open was Chestnut on December 2nd, followed by Villa Olivia on January 12th, and Snow Star on January 13th. Pushing through to Indiana, which only has two ski areas, Perfect North set the bar opening on December 2nd, while Paoli Peaks opened on January 17th. Riding on up to Michigan, Pine Knob and Mount Holly kicked off the season opening on November 26th with Bittersweet and Treetops in a tie for third opening on November 29th. Over in Minnesota, Andes Tower Hills took home the top spot on October 28th and Wild Mountain was just a couple of days behind them opening on October 30th. Powder Ridge took home the third spot opening on November 25th. There's that massive gap that we talked about. Sliding down to Missouri, both of their two ski areas opened in January with Snow Creek taking the edge with a January 14th opening and Hidden Valley just a day behind on January 15th. Heading north to uh, North Dakota, Frostfire got things started opening on December 1st and then Botno was just behind them opening on December 2nd. Huff Hills took a third place here opening on January 6th. Over in Ohio, Snow Trails took the top spot spinning its lifts for the season on December 21st. Then, Boston Mills followed a day later on December 22nd. Mad River Mountain followed shortly after with a January 6th opening. A quick note here, just for those keeping score, Big Creek in Ohio did open before snow trails, but since it's a private ski area, we did not jump them in this list. Just something to note. Over in South Dakota, Terry Peak opened up on December 7th, with Great Bear Ski Valley opening about a month later on January 8th. The UP opened its season on November 25th with Ski Rules spinning its list for the first time. Then Black River Basin followed opening on December 3rd. Coming in the third spot, we had Jackson Creek Summit and Mount Ripley, who both opened on December 16th. And finally, Wisconsin, who opened its season when Trollhagen spun its lifts on November 2nd. Mont du Lac opened on November 25th. And third was taken by Alpine Valley in Wisconsin, who opened on November 26th. Another quick note, Ausblick did open on November 24th, but again, since they are private, I didn't think they should jump the others. Just a little note for those keeping track. Looking at all the resorts across the Midwest, there was an average opening date last season of December 18th, with 60 of our Midwest areas opening on or before that date. We only had 12 ski areas this season open on or during the Thanksgiving weekend, one in Iowa, two in the Mitten, four in Minnesota, one in the UP, and four in Wisconsin. The Midwest first 10, well, I guess 11 since there was a tie, ski areas open last seasons were as follows. Andes Tower Hills in Minnesota on October 28th, Wild Mountain in Minnesota on October 30th, 
Trollhagen in Wisconsin on November 2nd, Osplick in Wisconsin on November 24th, Ski Brule in the UP on November 25th, Powder Ridge in Minnesota on November 25th, Mount Dulac in Wisconsin on November 25th, Alpine Valley in Wisconsin on November 26th, Spear of Mountain in Minnesota on November 26th, Pine Knob in Michigan on November 26th, Mount Holly in Michigan on November 26th, and Sundown Mountain in Iowa on November 26th. So did you guys get all that? Lots of data here, but it should give you a rough idea when you can expect to be on snow in your specific region. Now, if you wanna check out all of the data that we have collected over the past handful of seasons with averages, head on over to midwestgears.com slash openings. But there you guys have it, a quick look at last season's opening dates across the Midwest. Who do you think is gonna be first to open and when? Drop it in the comments below. I personally think Andy's Tower Hills, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But until next time, I hope everybody has a great week. Pray for that snow and I'll, uh, I'll see you out there.